Does the Prime Minister still stand by his statement that ramming this type of bill through Parliament without the support of any other political party is a tactic fit for a third world dictatorship, not for a democracy like Canada? The uh, leader of the NDP continues to try and avoid debate on the substance of this. The substance here, Mr. Speaker, is that we believe, uh, and Canadians believe, that you should be able to produce some identification to prove who you are before you vote. Mr. Speaker, I hope the leader of the NDP has more of a strategy for the next election other than just bogus parliamentary offices and voters who can't produce ID. So I ask the Prime Minister, it's the Prime Minister who just said word for word in this House that he wants members on both sides to go out and listen to Canadians. Why is he talking out of both sides of his mouth? On one side he says to listen to Canadians, on another side he stands this lightweight to give his answers for him. I've asked honourable members before, and I'll do so again, not to make personal characterizations of our colleagues. This minister's conduct yesterday was a disgrace to Parliament and to Canadians. Dealing with this minister is like playing chess with a pigeon. He flaps his wings all over the place, knocks the pieces off the table, messes all over the table, then struts around like he won the game. I know it's a Wednesday. I don't know what was in the coffee at caucus this morning, but... Members are getting a little over the top. There'll be no more of this. <laughs> what the heck? You guys are paying 167,000 bucks for this. All right, that's... <laughs> for the next nine minutes, you'll see nothing like that. We have our terrific Wednesday MPs panel who consider all that sort of garbage beneath them. But they do have strong opinions. Let's get started. NDP Deputy Leader is Megan Leslie, Conservative Finance Chair James Rajat, and Liberal MP from Cape Breton, Roger Kuzner. Cancel. Okay, whatever. Yes. <laughs> uh, I want to get to you first on this, Megan. Uh, Ed Fast, uh, mild-mannered Ed Fast, in the heat of today's raucous question period, certainly by our view, did a gun shooting motion across the aisle at Nikki Ashton. What's your thoughts on that happened? You know, I didn't see that. I have seen, I've seen the footage, right? I didn't see what happened. Um, but one of our members stood up and made a point of order and said, this is what I saw. Um, Ed Fast categorically denied it. I am not well, to... Here, have yeah, a look at that. Oh, there's the Can picture. you see that? I mean, okay. you tell me that's not what he's doing. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, I had only seen uh, clips of it. Okay. That's not appropriate, obviously. Um, I don't. May, maybe there's a good reason. Maybe he's hey, hey, Peter McKay down the aisle. Who knows, right? But like, let's have an explanation about what happened. But the thing that troubles me uh, equally is the fact that right after that, all of a sudden, on our side of the house, we've got a conservative uh, MP who's come round the back, comes through the back doors, through the curtains that you see behind us, and has to be physically restrained. What was he angry about? I, I'm assuming, I heard him yelling, I didn't know what he was yelling. I'm assuming he's yelling, you know, apologize, apologize to, to our member. But what the heck is going on? I mean, we've been here, the three of us before, where we saw what was almost a physical altercation in the House. And it's the same thing all over again, where we're getting Conservative members coming over, physically intimidating and challenging what's going on. There is a proper forum for this. This is not, you don't allow this in kindergarten. I was going to say it's not kindergarten. We don't allow this in kindergarten. This is the House of Commons. Roger Guzner. That was a little chippy in there today. It yeah. was, uh, I don't know if that's indicative of what's going to take place here over the next, uh, you know, in the home stretch through to the uh, summer break or whatever. But I just found th this week really was, you know, it was a little uh, uh, more chippy. Um, Ronnie Cannes is a good, he's a gentleman, he's a good guy and that. He was very agitated with the, what went on between uh, uh, Ed Fast and uh, uh, was it Dan Ashton, Harris? Yeah. The, uh, yeah. So whatever whatever happened there, uh, um, you know, if Ed's across the uh, the aisle for me, and you know, if he pointed a finger, or whatever it might have been, but I, you know, I, I think we're we're, we're pretty. Uh, I, I don't get off on the uh, you know, run into the teacher or anything like that. When when that, if it's something really egregious. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I just don't see the point in that, but it, uh, it got s much silly really much quick. Of, much to do about nothing, uh, James, with that? Well, I think so. I, and, and I think, I mean, Rogers, I think it's a fair point. It's a little chippy, and I think, you know, emotions, we all need a break emotions sometimes get the better <laughs> of ourselves. But Ron Cannon went over to say that he, the, 
the member officers should apologize. Um, I mean, Ed Fast is as straight as an arrow as you can get. Yeah. I mean, he's a mild-mannered guy. His, the only heckling I see him do is kibitzing, friendly kibitzing across the floor with other members on the, on the opposition benches. So, I mean, frankly, I you know, I think we should move on to better things. I am, in fact, most upset about the fact that Wayne Easter uh, stole my dance. That is one of my patented <laughs> dance moves. Uh, you wouldn't believe it from a mild-mannered MP like myself, but I have quite the dance repertoire, and I'm a little upset he stole them from me. If you'd like to give us a show right here, yeah. we'll disengage Can you. you and, uh, nope, I'll here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a little dance-off, Don. I, I, I do think, though, we shouldn't be minimizing this, right? I, I understand that Roger and James are trying to uh, de-escalate the situation, uh, and I get that. I get that, I get that need to want to de-escalate, but it's not acceptable, and it's happening too much. It's my but, workplace. But it's it, my workplace. But, but and, I, and I take that very what you say very seriously, Megan. But what should happen is, I mean, I think you would recognize. I think you even said head is a straight as guys. Absolutely. They come. I mean, you know, stand up, make a point. Frankly, I mean, I think the speaker wanted to calm the situation down and say everyone just relax. Members should not be going on the other side of the house. No. Think that's a fair point. But you know, we all let ourselves, our emotions get the best of us, and, and frankly. You know, we should all calm ourselves I down mean, at this point. Mulcair was, uh, Tom Mulcair was calling Pierre Polyev a lightweight today. And, you know, it just seems like this Elections Act has got tremendous heat in it in the House of Commons. I'm not sure if it does out in the real world, but it seems to be out of control in here. Why so much emotion is going into fixing a few election you know, vouching and stuff like that. Most people hadn't even heard of a month and a half ago. I I disagree with that analysis. I really think that this is important. It's about our democracy. Um, and if it isn't such a big deal, then why can't we have hearings on it? Then why can't we take our time with it? Then why are they moving time allocation? I think it is a big deal. And so, yeah, emotions are getting pretty high. And and a little bit uh, of trying to put my myself in the shoes of the Conservatives, it's got to be tough to sit there day after day and just get hammered away and not have anything except Pierre Paul of standing up and saying, well, I think it's good, right? Person after person is lining up to say, no, this is a problem. This is an attack on our democracy. It is interesting. Your leader has said, if I'm prime minister, this bill's a goner. Um, you uh, think that should be a priority of uh, any Trudeau government that's forming eventually, theoretically, and well, Maybe some of the bad legislation will just wrap it up into one of those big omnibus bills, you know, that... Uh, <laughs> Throw it all under the, the bus. The, these guys have made the, uh, the playing field pretty... Uh, they, they, they've put the parameters pretty wide on uh, what you can include in the bill. Uh, I, want me to tell you something? I, I think it's sort of... Uh, it reflects the level of frustration on the part of parliamentarians. You know, I just went through a bill, a private member's bill, with, that uh, uh, impacts on organized labor in this, in this country, and uh, 525 on Blaine Culkin's bill. And witness after witness after witness, the, the ones that we had, everybody spoke against it. They said, there's no need of this. The, the card check system is working well. We don't need, you know, you don't have to make, this is a, uh, you know, a, a solution in search of a problem. Problem. But still, they ran this kind of stuff through, and we've seen that on so many fronts. So I think there's a huge degree of frustration on the part of when you see so many witnesses that have come speaking against this particular piece of legislation, expert witnesses, but still they're saying, no, no, turn the deaf ear to it, and they're dram just driving her through. Yeah, James, this seems like a hill to die on for the Conservatives of the Elections Act. Why? But I think we should actually follow the advice. There was someone from the UK, I think their electoral officer, saying we should, first of all, sort of calm down, take away a lot of the personal attacks on this and actually focus on the issues of the bill. I, I've actually been watching the Procedure and House Affairs Committee when I can. It's chaired very well by Joe Preston, who I think opposition parties would say is a very fair chair. They've had a lot of witnesses who have expressed uh, concerns and reservations about a lot of aspects of the bill. So the bill's been passed the second reading. We voted on the principle of the bill. Opposition parties and government members should introduce amendments at the committee stage and either vote yay or nay on the amendments, bring it back to the House. That's the process it should go through. I frankly had uh, roundtables in my writing with people who have raised concerns about the bill and I've relayed those directly to the minister and frankly I found the minister pretty open to a discussion about various aspects of the bill. Obviously he's defending the legislation he's put forward but I sense that he's, he's open to discussion on amendments of the legislation. I'm running out of time on this. I want to quickly get to the idea that the NDP had these satellite offices that were ruled null and void. Don't, you can't staff them with taxpayer finance staff anymore. But they want to go beyond that. It seems like everyone's demanding that they should 
refund all the money they've spent already on these offices. What's your view? Well, yeah, the Board of Internal Economy did say it's obviously inappropriate to use general taxpayer funds, parliamentary resources that are supposed to be used for constituents uh, for partisan purposes. That's clearly wrong, and it seems the NDP was caught in this. And I think it's, it's fair to say that the party ought to pay those funds back. If they're not used for parliamentary purposes, if they're in fact used for partisan purposes, then the money's ought to be paid back. Your thoughts on that, Megan Leslie? Well, we actually checked this out before we did it. We got approval from the Speaker. The BOIE did not find, the Board of Internal Economy did not find that we had violated any rules. They changed the rules. So they, they've actually decided, yes, NDP was in compliance. They sought permission ahead of time. They've changed the rules from here on out. But here's the thing. Those rules disappear in 2015. So should the Conservatives become the opposition, they'll be allowed to do it. I mean, talk about cynical. Talk about cynical. Okay. Lazar, do you roger on this one? Uh, well, they continue to investigate this and, you know, see what, whether or not it's to be paid back. We'll see what happens with the okay. uh, outcome of the uh, study. Same. James, can I get a quick thought from you? Uh, you were at Brian Mulroney's dinner last night. We're going to talk to a speechwriter as well as Elizabeth May, who was a guest of honor there. What was your takeaway from that? What did you think of what the prime minister, former prime minister, says about the current prime minister? Well, I mean, it's, he's an outstanding speaker, and obviously, I thought it was an excellent speech, and it, it, it talked about uh, maximizing the value from our energy resources for the country. He talked about pipelines and access to markets. So I thought it was an excellent speech in terms of its topic, and I think he had some very good advice for us in terms of dealing with First Nations communities in terms of dealing with environmental concerns to make sure it's sustainable but he was very pro in terms of you know development he he talked about sustainable development yeah, yeah. but he very much talked about development and maximizing the resources that are in the ground in Canada told the uh, US ambassador right there in the crowd approve that keystone he was, he was very direct with the ambassador <laughs> yes so he puts welcome to Canada yeah, ambassador. that was his first event as US <laughs> ambassador to Canada all right, have a good couple of weeks off. Maybe we'll connect with you wherever you are in the country at the time. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate that.